Hey, hey, how is everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome to Random Videos by Brandy. I'm Brandy. If you're new here, thank you for coming. I hope you will stay. And all of you can subscribe, turn on the bell icon, you'll know every time I upload. And y'all, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm never here to. Um, to put anyone down or to bash anyone and I don't encourage you all to um, like hate on anyone either but I have some concerns like I watch a ton of YouTube and like you guys what the hell is going on with all awesome stomach broom like my very first video that I ever did on here I was talking about the one where I was talking about James Charles and Trisha Paytas getting into it and like, talk, like, I was making fun of, like, I wasn't trying to hurt her feelings, but Trisha Paytas thinks she's famous, and then James Charles talking, I, just the whole deal with her talking about the, the, the whole dog situation, like, anyways, we don't even get started back on that again, that was just the whole, like, that was just so extra, and, like, when did Trisha Paytas become famous, I'm just curious, like, if she's famous, am I famous too? Oh my god. I'm famous. Oh. Anyways, you guys, like, Austin McBroom has um, been wanting to fight people lately. And the reason why it concerns me is because if y'all don't know who Austin McBroom is from the uh, my first video that got deleted during me trying to edit, why I was trying to edit a live video after it was already live. Duh. But anyways, so, um... Austin McBroom is a family vlogger. He, his family, they, their family makes tons of money. Like, they, they actually have, his wife um, sells, like, some kind of skin cream and stuff. Like, they have, like, tons of shit going on. Now he's, like, he will do anything for money. Like, he's trying to fight anyone he can fight. First, he tries to fight, like, Logan Paul, I guess it was. And, like, Logan Paul basically laughed him off because, you know, Logan Paul's trying to take this shit seriously. He doesn't really, like, he still does his YouTube thing, but he's a freaking MMA fighter. Like, he's really an MMA fighter now. He trains and shit. Like, he's serious about that shit. So, anyways, Austin McBroom's hitting up this kid, like, and I don't know if you guys watch TikTok or not, but... There's this kid, I think his name is, like, Bryce Hall. Like, I don't even watch TikTok that much. That's, like, my kids' thing. And my daughters are more into that. Actually, my dad is really into that, too, which is kind of creepy. Um, my stepdad, whatever. Anyways. Um, so, long story short, Austin McBroom is, like, a dad. Um, their little girl, I think her name is Elle. She is, like, a gorgeous, adorable thing, like. Oh my god, she's so cute. But, like, does it not make it seem like maybe Elle uh, is not in the best hands with him because he's a little off the wall? Like, um, I understood the Silly Juice thing. It's a family channel, and they're selling their little Silly Juice. Okay, do you. Make your money. Get that coin. If you can sell Silly Juice, I'm all for it. Like, if people like Silly Juice, I've never had Silly Juice. I can't say... Whether it's good or bad, but hey, if I ever see any Silly Juice, maybe I'll buy me a Silly Juice and check it out. I don't know. Anyways, like, um, the whole Silly Juice thing, I totally got that. And I thought it was actually pretty, um, intelligent that they came out with a product that no one was really selling. And that they were selling this, um, this juice. And, like, I was like, okay, cool. That's what's up. So, anyways, we get to the point now where uh, it's like, okay, you sold your silly juice, which is great. Then your wife comes out with her skin cream, which I'm not even going to comment on her skin cream because I have heard alleged things. Actually, I will comment on it, and I would just say, allegedly, she's basically taken some pawns. I will say pawns because it's a another brand and um she's basically taking a name brand skin cream and just kind of throwing her own label on it and says this is my thing you guys i made this like my god buy my skin cream because i'm you know i'm, I'm me and i do my thing i'm a vlogger but 
She is really pretty. She claims she's never had plastic surgery, but y'all, her nose has never... If y'all seen how she looked in the beginning, like, I'm all for it. Hey, if you want to have a rhinoplasty, that is what is up, girl. But I can contour the hell out of mine, and, like, I still have this bitch. Like, her nose looks like mine. And now she's got this, like, little tiny, petite, little, cute little... Eye. She's got the perfect nose now. But if she would just tell people the truth, you know, like, hey, I don't contour, this isn't makeup, this is literally, I got plastic surgery, like, anyways, we're not even here to talk about her, or that her beauty cream did not change the shape of her nose, by any means, like, can any beauty cream change the shape of your face, like, really, come on now, even the little thing, like, did y'all see on the Kardashians, well, open and close your mouth to make, like, your double chin go away type deal, uh, that was the whole thing, too. Anyways, that was something funny. I just thought that was funny or made me think of something else. But, you know, people's minds be going in the gutter over here already. So, we're not going to go there. I finally noticed I have some women following me, though. And I love it. Thank you, ladies. I needed some ladies to come follow me because I love my true crime channel. And that's what I'm here to mostly do is true crime. But I do like to have a little bit of fun on the weekends. And, you know, when my kids are not home, I do like to have a little fun, like I said. And part of my fun that I have is taking my meds. And my medication is natural. Today, my medication is... Actually, right. Hold on. Today, my medication is... Some Gorilla Glue for... And for those of you who have a problem with my meds, I do hold a green card. I do buy all my marijuana legally. And my edibles are all legal as well. And I hold a red card. I do take trips out to Vegas to buy my stuff. And yeah, I have been to Cali and Vegas and I get my weed there. And... So I don't have like a local dealer. You know, that's why my weed's always in a package. That's why it always has a prescription on it. Like if you guys didn't see, like there's literally like a prescription on my, on my weed. Um, so yeah, just in case you guys were wondering or have a problem with me smoking, this is because, um, oh yeah, today's Friday. So I can talk about whatever. Um, well, actually I lost my son a while back. And since losing my son, I have lost my mind. He was 18 years old, and I thought I was such an OG. I had raised a child from the time that he was born until he was 18. And I had my son on the 13th of February, 1999, at almost midnight. He was almost a Valentine's baby. He was actually due on Valentine's Day. But he came about an hour or two early, and... When Josh came into the world, my life changed, you all. I realized what love was for the first time ever. I thought I was in love with his dad. And when I met Josh, I realized I didn't know what it meant to be in love. Like, I just fell in love when Dr. Nyan handed me my baby. And when I saw, like, I literally, she went and got me a mirror. I was a first-time mom, and she went and got the mirror and let me watch him come out. Like, I'm literally watching my badge, like, rip and be cut because I needed an episiotomy because Josh is a, you know, he might have been a short guy, but he was a fat little guy. He was 7'9", but he was 19 inches long, so he looked really fat. He was just a short little fat thing. But anyways, he was so cute, and I fell so in love with him. And we bonded, you know, over the 18 years that I had him, we got super duper close. So, I, I'm sorry, he's sick. Whenever he left me, I felt like I was alone because he had always been with me, you know. I was young. I was really young when I had Josh. And we, we grew up together. And, like, not, like, he taught me how to be a, a mom. He taught me how to to be a better person and when he was taken
Michigan from the world. I didn't want to be in it anymore either. Oh my god, you guys. I was trying to make a lighthearted video. I really plan on getting on here and making a really quick lighthearted video and just talking about some silly stuff. I'm so sorry. Okay, so anyways, that's just a real moment. I have PTSD and um, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, fuck, sorry. Anyways, if I could edit better, I could edit that out, but it seems like every time I try to edit a video, it gets deleted. So I'm really bad at editing, which I need to figure out how to edit. And I agree with you guys that I do need to get in the studio more. I did make a video in the studio last night, though, and the one for my bed actually turned out better. I don't know what it is about getting in there in the lights and being in front of, like, when I, when I can see the camera on me and it doesn't feel like I'm just sitting there talking to my friends and I feel like I'm, like, on camera, camera. I have this anxiety or fear of the camera and you can tell by watching me like in those moments that I feel super uncomfortable. Like it's getting better, I'm not going to lie. Every time I get into the studio, I do better, I believe. Um, actually my first video was really, really good, but I was on Xanax and I do get prescribed, I did get prescribed Xanax, but um, I changed doctors thinking that you know, this would be good for me because I wanted to see a therapist as well as a doctor. And the psychiatrist I was seeing um, wanted me to only see them. And they didn't really want me to see. They said if I was going to see anyone, you know, any other therapist or whatever, that I would have to see them only. Because usually the way it works is whoever you see writes your medicine has a doctor that works with them who writes your medicine. And the one that I was seeing... We didn't have, like, therapy sessions. I would just tell them what's going on, and they would write my Xanax. Well, anyways, in my first video, I was on Xanax, and it was, you can tell I was super comfortable, you know. But Xanax is a band-aid. It's not, like, something you can take all the time and expect to be, like, a normal human being. It's something that you got to take when you're feeling, I guess, like how I, like how I have panic attacks and stuff. You know, when you have a panic attack, you take a Xanax, and you feel good. And it goes away and you don't get high. You just get mellow. But anyways, weed is the better way to go. If you can. Let's go, Jack. Let's go. Weed helps my anxiety. It helps me sleep. Like, you know, my anxiety stops me from sleeping. Do any of you guys have anxiety? You can comment in the chat. By the way, comment in the chat how you found my video. I love it that you guys are finding my videos. And I really appreciate that you click on my videos. Thank you so much for every single one of you that clicks on my video. It means so fucking much to me, for real, for real, y'all. I don't have any paid subscriptions. Like, even on my Facebook, I don't have a level up program or anything like that. Because my intention when I started the channel was simply to build a community so that I could have other people who are into true crime and like maybe other moms who have lost their children and just anyone who wants to talk could come and talk and we could build a community and I was gonna like you know do my YouTube and everything also at that moment I was like in the midst of you know everything was going really great like I just Back in February of last year, I got fired from this really good job that I had. I was working, making Bath & Body, or I, I wasn't making the Bath & Body Works products, but I was helping to, like, get them sent to their people and stuff. I was in a factory called Radio, and I loved it. Well, I got laid off, and then, like, I finally got the job back. And, like, everything was going, like, okay. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm excited. Like, things are going good. So, I started up a YouTube channel. And I was like, dude, I'm going to make money from... I'm going to be back at the job that pays better than probably any job I ever had. And I'm going to make money that way. And then that way I will be fine and financially taken care of to where I can go on YouTube at my leisure and build my channel slowly and, you know, just kind of do it at a pace to where 
if I need to buy a mic one week and then next paycheck buy, you know, a, um, one of those, um, what's it called? A, what's my one little thing with the buttons called at the studio? Um, oh my gosh, I forgot what it's called. The soundboard or something? But anyways, I was just thinking that, you know, it would be much easier since I have my job back at radio that I would be able to buy some of my stuff and build my channel and grow my community and it would all be like in a slow pace probably but that it would happen and it took me like remember guys josh died or was murdered i can't say that he died because someone took him from me this dude died tristan jewel stole him he murdered him and shot him and killed him so when josh was taken it took me a few years you know Josh used to tell me all the time, Mom, you should go on YouTube and be one of those girls who puts makeup on. Now, they call him a beauty influencer, but my son didn't know that. But he noticed that, you know, I know how to do makeup. And he used to see me put makeup on his little sisters. And, like, he knew that that's what I loved to do. He would see me take his sisters in the bathroom and just spend hours putting makeup on them. Just because they were little girls and they were having fun and I was having fun. And that's just what we like to do. And when their friends would come over, I would do the same to them. Like, I mean, I literally had people who would, who would like say shit to me and say that I was making them grow up before their time and all this stuff. But I mean, what little girl does not love to play with makeup? I remember being like three and four years old and my aunt Robin would take me and put makeup on me and it made me feel so good. And as an adult, makeup still makes me feel good. I love makeup. I play with makeup all the time. And that's something that my depression took away from me. For those of you who have ever been through anxiety and depression, it takes away anything you enjoy. You stop enjoying all those things and you can't find happiness. And I guess that's where the Xanax comes in, is you take the Xanax in order to be able to enjoy those things. Because without it, you don't even have the, like, you have so much pent up energy. You want to clean, you want to do anything to get stuff off your mind. But when it comes to doing stuff you like, you don't want to do those things because they remind you of the person that you're missing. It's not cool. So anyways, Boog used to tell me all the time, Mom, you should be one of those people who put makeup on on YouTube. Like, it's a new thing. And, like, you would be starting before it's a saturated market. You would be, like, you'd be the shit, Mom. You would be, like, the, the queen of the makeup world. And back then, I was like, dude, YouTube is so lame, Josh. Like, I mean, come on. I'm on MySpace and, and Facebook. Like, I, Facebook had just started at the time. I wasn't considering that, you know, social media was going to be what it is today. So, anyways, I didn't care about YouTube. Um, I'm so sorry, you guys. I was crying. I am, like, having a moment. Hold on one second. Um. So, anyways, okay, sorry about that, I need to have a tissue, I was like, my nose was running and stuff, so, like, I originally was going to be a beauty influencer, like, before my son was murdered, I was thinking about like, I was actually had just gotten this makeup mirror that had really good lights. It was called a Skinny Ricky, and um, they used to be sold by a MLM called Unique. And I almost joined, that's a whole other story, but I almost joined an MLM one time. If y'all want to hear the story time, um, let me know. I'll, say, I'll give you guys a story time next weekend. So, I also have story time. I went to prison for three years. I can tell you guys that one. That's a good one. I should do a poll for real and see what all you guys want to hear about. I don't even know if I have enough subscribers to do a poll. <laughs> Anyways, so I originally was going to go on YouTube as a beauty influencer. And I still may do some get ready with me's whenever I do like a true crime or I'm talking about something else. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, you guys, um... Now, Crystal Rogers, like, her remains are in Quantico, Virginia right now being identified or being proven that it's her doing DNA, whatever they, you know, all that good stuff. But, have you guys heard about 
that girl in 2014 there was this chick oh my god what is her fucking name she had a five-year-old son and like it's on they the police had to watch this bitch on camera like killing her five-year-old um he was perfectly healthy it kind of reminded me of the uh of the case where the gypsy rose case but on this in this case it was the opposite the mom it was the mom that killed the little boy Mm. y'all this one was ooh. if y'all want me to do this story like i'm trying to think of what the girl's name was if i could think of her name you guys might have already you might y'all might already know the story i might not want to know it but it was one i had never heard of before so and for me to not know of a true crime story especially one that involves children um it's pretty rare because like if you guys any everyone who knows me on here you definitely know that Brandy's thing is true crime. That's what I do. I sit around and watch investigative discovery and like that's kind of my life. And now I don't just watch investigative discovery and clean house and work. I actually do something else now. I do this uh, true crime thing. So, well, actually, it's not just true crime. We have a little fun, right? We talk. Oh, yeah. Like we were just talking about Austin McBroom, you guys. What is his deal? Why does he want to fight everyone? Like, is he okay? Do y'all think he's okay? Are y'all worried about L? Do y'all think L should, like, have to deal with that? Or do y'all think his wife is, like, okay with, like, him acting the way? Is he having a midlife crisis? Like, what is going on with this dude? He's, like, I don't know. He's, something's up with him. I'm very concerned about him. I think that, you know, the silly juice and the whole, the whole true crime, you know, um, thing of mine, that's what I prefer to do. But when it comes to these family blockers, y'all, they are a mess. If y'all have not seen um, Micah uh, Stoffer, Micah and James Stoffer, they're another um, family... Now, the Stauffer family had adopted a little boy. Um, his name was Huxley. And a lot of YouTubers don't say his name. I don't know why. Because, I mean, his name's obviously not Huxley anymore. So, it doesn't matter if you say his name. It's not, not like we're fucking with his identity. Um, um, anyways... They literally rehomed their adopted son, and they continue to do videos. Like, apparently, maybe they laid off for a while. I don't know, but, but it was really, really sketchy. Like, the whole world, like, cancel culture. I think that's probably, they, yeah, Micah Stoffer and James Stoffer probably invented cancel culture. And if they are not canceled, if they are still making videos, y'all, and getting on Twitter, doing their thing, and, like, I think James has, like, what, the Stoffer Garage, and Micah even has her own little thing where she does her own shit, too. So, the family bloggers are, they're really, like, doing any and everything they can to make money, and... I could not imagine if my channel was even successful enough to where I was just making a little money on the side, like, even a hundred dollars a month paycheck on the side just for extra cash, like, for getting on here and talking to people just about stuff that I want to talk about, what I want to talk about. Like, sometimes, yeah, it gets tedious doing research, and, yeah, yeah I get tired sometimes, and I want to go to bed, and especially, you know, whenever I have a lot to do the next day or something, but... It's rewarding at the end of the day when, well, right now, when I watch my videos, I totally cringe because I'm like, oh my God, look at me. Like, the, my live video last night, y'all, I couldn't hear the monitor through my headset. So, I thought that the monitor wasn't playing the interview and... I had searched for a different interview, so I was thinking I was watching a whole nother interview, and you guys could hear, but I couldn't hear, so I'm, like, sitting here talking. It's just, it was a fucking dumpster fire. Serious, like, if not just trash, like, 
trash on fire. When I call something a dumpster fire, it's because, like, you know how everyone calls, like, trash is a new way of saying something sucks. Well, how, like, my kids say, eh, that's trash. Well, this was not just trash. This was a fucking whole dumpster, and it was on fire, and fucking, Jesus Christ, it was horrible. But, yeah, there was that. That was, wow. Cheers, cheers, cheers. It's raining so bad. It's storming here. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear it in the background, but it's so relaxing. It's so quiet in my house right now. Sometimes it's nice when it's quiet like this. Like, I do miss the girls when they're not home, but... Oh, there's that noise. Either one of them just walked in. Either Dewey or BJ just came in the door. I don't know. My brother might have just got home from work. My little brother is my roommate. Is it so cool to have my brother as my roommate? You guys, I love it. When I was young, I never did the, like... You know how everyone lives with, like, one of their girlfriends whenever they're young or they live with one of their guy friends and they, like, just do the bachelorette or bachelor thing? Not me. I went from me and Josh. Um, we lived with Eddie's family, basically.